everyone and welcome to TDK's World of Football. As you're about to see, it's an amusing world and one in which the referee doesn't always get it right. Let's start off here in the Portuguese First Division where the defending goalkeeper doesn't like anyone to stand around him. Watch him give the attacker a shove in the back and then, believe it or not, the defending side get the free kick because the referee thought the attacker was diving. Here's a match from the Greek First Division. The wing is brought down and the crowd aren't too pleased. Watch this player here, he's on the same side as the guy who's been fouled, but why are the crowd chasing him? It all turns a little bit silly. Spanish First Division now, and here's Jose Camacho, who's a candidate for heart trouble, if ever there was one. Why is he so upset? Well, we've thought about it, and we think he's upset because the fans at the far end can't see because of the giant flag. We've paid good money to come as well. Brazil now, they have their fair share of nuts, a booking and a queue for a river dance. Watch the fan we've ring, a little southpaw, as he demonstrates on this player from Fortezela. Now I'm trying to spot the referee. He's amongst there somewhere, trying to sort it all out. There must be easier jobs. Look here at some of the argy-bargy and the continental temperaments the referees have to deal with. He's very adamant, it's a red card, but still they argue and argue and argue. And spot Bobby Robson here, trying to calm some of his sporting Lisbon players down. And then he thinks to himself, it's not worth it. Just another typical game between Sporting and Porto. Now watch for Vita Bahia, the goalkeeper in black here. What does he get for his troubles? Well, the referee has spotted something that the goalkeeper has said, and despite all the foggy conditions, the referee is happy to race virtually the length of the pitch to give him a red card. Vita Baye can hardly believe it. Now the referee's awarded a penalty for handball, but we can't understand why both teams are arguing with him. More fun now from Portugal, a quickly taken free kick by Benfica, and the referee's in trouble again, this time with the Sporting Lisbon players. And here's Paulo Futre giving the referee a hard time. Now the referees awarded a penalty here for handball, but we can't understand why both teams once again are arguing with him. Well, there's never a dull moment with Latin temperament. Just look at all the pushing and shoving. He'd be a referee. This looks like a good goal. But we're not entirely sure what all the arguments are about. Everyone on the pitch seems to be unhappy, and the result is a red card. And this fella is having none of it. Now this is a famous instant from a Spanish third division game. Just about everyone is involved in this argument, and the result? Well, the referee is having none of it. He's off. Sporting Lisbon once again. Look at this. What a terrible tackle. No booking. Not even a free kick. Incredible. Question now. Offside? Or well, we're not really sure.
Offside again. Same linesman, same mistake. Funny looking bloke and funny decisions. How could he have got this one wrong? All of the red team were clearly onside. Another offside decision and he's got it wrong again. The man who looks like Rasputin proved to be a difficult customer here for the team attacking. This game is over and this fan is unhappy with the referee. The Middle East now and a red card is shown and number 14, we think, doesn't agree with the decision. Into Paraguay now and here's a women's cup final. This poor old referee. Brazil now and the referee's done something to upset the fan. Oh, quite unbelievable. And then in all the commotion, the referee does get a chance to get his revenge. Now, who says referees aren't fit? Just watch this guy run. Now, this is Benfica against Belenenses in Portugal. Here the ball comes in from the far side, no danger, and the goalkeeper gets into a bit of a flap, straight through his hands, and the number seven puts it in. Well, here it is again, and the puzzling thing, well, the goal is disallowed, and we just can't figure out why. There was clearly no foul on the goalkeeper. Here, Sporting Lisbon are defending against Benfica. The Benfica player takes it down beautifully on his right foot, manages to turn, and down he goes. The referee couldn't be better placed, but no penalty. Have a look at this one again. The defender makes Tony Adams look refined and delicate. Boa Vista here in the black and white getting stretched at the far post, and a great goal. But no. So why did the referee disallow it? Well, he said that the guy lying on this side of the near post is offside and interfering with play. We're not so sure. Right, here's a few where we want you to decide for yourselves. Answers on a postcard, please. Now in this game there are three strong claims for penalties but only one of them was given. So which one do you think? And was this offside? Right, here's the incident. 
The penalty is given. Now have a look at the slow motion replay. He was nowhere near him. Now this one is actually a well-timed tackle. It doesn't look so at first, but look again. He clearly gets the ball first. Have a look at this one. The player goes down. It looks like a penalty, but the slow motion replay shows clearly he's diving. And here's a Portuguese goalkeeper getting more than the benefit of the doubt. He kind of wins the ball and then a bear hug to stop the attacker moving in on goal. Just take a look at this one. It doesn't look very much at first, but then you see the hand go out and the shirt's almost ripped off. This is Chelsea against Leicester City in the FA Cup. The final moments of the match, Chelsea desperately trying to find a winning goal. Roberto Di Matteo trying to find that one breakthrough for Chelsea. Chelsea sweep forward as Leicester concentrate on defence. Here's Erland Jonsson playing a 1-2 with Viali. Takes the ball on his chest, goes down, and the referee might reach as a penalty kick. Spencer Pryor thinks that Erland Jonsson took a dive. So too do the Leicester City team. But Mike Reid is insistent. And what a chance for Chelsea to win the game. Watch number 18, Erland Jonsson here. Takes the ball cleanly on his chest. Collides with Pryor. But was there any intent by Pryor to foul Erland Jonsson? The slow motion replay suggests the answer is no. Well, mayhem ensues. Casey Keller tries to calm down his captain, Steve Walsh. Pryor is still clearly unhappy and runs the risk of being sent off. You can see it's why he's frustrated. But the decision stands. Martin O'Neill, the Leicester City manager, is crestfallen. What a way to lose a cap tie. Casey Keller has to face a late, late penalty from Frenchman Frank Leboeuf. Leboeuf with a chance to send Chelsea through, and because of that controversial incident, they are through. Mexico in white against Bolivia in green in a vital World Cup qualifier. Mexico eventually went on to qualify for France 98, but Bolivia on the attack here and a crunching tackle. Now if you missed it, a Mexican player spits at a Bolivian player on the left-hand side of your screen. The Bolivians want to show the referee exactly what's happened. It's always a tense game when Mexico and Bolivia meet, and this was no exception. Echeverria, number 10, wants to get on with the game. So a moment of high anxiety here for Mexico in the white as they try to defend this free kick 35 yards out. You can see by the length of the runner what Bolivia intend. Here's a free kick, but did the ball go over the line? Mexico claim no goal. Bolivia are celebrating. Who'd be a referee in this situation? The referee has already made his mind up and says goal. But that's not the end of it because all sorts of problems are happening on the touchline. The assistant referee is surrounded by furious Mexican officials. Then the National Guard arrive. They try to restore order. It's not easy. Then some Mexican players get involved. All because of this incident. Did the ball cross the line? The slow motion replay quite clearly shows the answer. 
The referee got it absolutely right. The ball had crossed the line and it was a goal. But the Mexican officials didn't know that. They didn't have the aid of the slow motion replay. Order is eventually restored. Boromir Tolomic, the Mexican coach, argues consistently. The goal is given and stands, and this man is right. This is Uruguay against Peru in a World Cup qualifier, and all this just to keep the ball in play. Now there are two blows to the face of Marino here. The referee has spotted it, and out comes a yellow card. Let's have a look at the slow motion replay again. What should Peruvian play? One, two, what a slap in the face that was. And really the Peruvian should have been sent off. If that isn't a red card offence, what is? Later in the same game now, and watch this foul on the goalkeeper. Now the rules of the game say you're not allowed to show your studs when challenging for the ball. All six studs were shown there to the goalkeeper, who quite clearly felt the full effect of this challenge. Later in the same game, and a quite outrageous incident. Now there's nothing wrong in being competitive, but this is ridiculous. Watch the number seven here who loses possession. One kick, two kicks, and then a stamp on the opponent. And the referee brings out the red card immediately. It's a hideous challenge by Otero number seven. And he comes back into the fray to argue his case. Now watch this instant once again. He loses possession and that's when he loses his rag. One kick, two kicks. He's not content with that as he stamps on his opponent as well. More mayhem from South America now. Venezuela in the dark shirts. And an awful challenge by Rodo Jäger. The referee finally decides to do something about it. And Rodo Jäger is sent off. Argentina versus Peru in the Copa America. Now watch this penalty incident. The ball quite literally hits the hand, not the other way around. It wasn't an intentional foul, but the referee says penalty. And more mayhem ensues. The goalkeeper trudges to his goal line. He's not happy. And neither is teammates. A terrific penalty coming up, but watch what happens after the ball hits the net. A mini war ensues as both sets of players try to get the ball back. Two players hit the deck. The referee tries to sort it out. Who are the culprits? The spitting going on, pushing going on, arguing going on. Here's the instant once again. Now watch out for the Argentina number two, Barrizzo. He pushes the referee and therefore is shown a yellow card. But what he hasn't realised is that's his second yellow card of the match. Now Peru know that and they tell the referee. So it all results in Berizzo getting sent off. And they just scored a, a penalty kick. Berizzo can't believe it. He's ushered to the touchline by his teammates. And Argentina had to play the remainder of the game with ten men. Same game and a clash of heads after two players had hit the advertising hoarding. It was hardly an accidental clash of heads. Gallardo is the Argentine and the Peruvian defender goes down as if shot by a sniper's bullet. 
And how about this for some splendid play acting? Rolling around on the turf. Here's the instant once again, as both players dispute possession. And watch Gallardo number nine, getting a real eyeball with the defender. That's all the contact there was. But all that play acting eventually results in the referee taking action. And Gallardo is sent off. Now there's one golden rule in football, if the ball's in the back of the net, it's a goal. Or is it? I think they were using fishermen's nets here, which had one or two holes in them. Look at this once again, the ball goes outside the upright, but ends up in. Now this is Trom Service's Chelsea in the Cup Winners' Cup. Chelsea were warned that the weather could be bad, but they didn't expect anything like this. Now the fourth official here from UEFA is telling the referee that the players can't see the touch lines. Rude Hullet wants to know what's going on exactly and he says the conditions are unplayable. So out comes the Tromso sweeper. Quite literally. It's football but not as we know it. Now in this bizarre state of affairs, Chelsea find themselves 2-1 behind. There's a sweeper once again, playing better than the number five. Now Andy Myers is trying to come on as a substitute here for Chelsea, and Tromso get the ball in the area and score. So 3-1 now to Tromso, and Ruud Hullet is absolutely furious that he hasn't been allowed to make this substitution. Tromso can hardly believe their luck, the fans can hardly believe the weather, Andy Myers can hardly believe he hasn't been allowed on the pitch. As usual, plenty of controversy for the officials. And here's a few instants to prove that the referees have to be fit. They have to be agile and always need to keep their eye on the ball. Thanks for watching, I hope we haven't put off any prospective referees applying to join the trade. Who'd be a referee these days?